So I did have some very good coaching, but I should try and make my remarks as brief as possible. So although you'll see maybe a lot of information on the slides, these will be available um, on ILSE's website, so I will not be covering every point that you see up here. I would like just to re bring us back to the purpose of this workshop, which was to identify and address topics related to composition, of course, from a scientific perspective, so let's take our, ha our regulator hats off and you know, talk about the science and to evaluate our current approach. And then, you know, what we did was really facilitate an exchange of ideas. There were a lot of ideas that were brought forward and discussed, and, you know, we all contributed to the success of that. Here are the objectives again. And, you know, the one thing I wanted to say is that I think in this room we all have the same objective. We know that in 2050 the population is projected to be 9.3 billion people. So our objective for all of us is to feed this population. So, you know, whether we come from academia, industry, or government, we all do have the same purpose. So how we achieve this might be slightly different. Um, you know, this is just um, some highlights from the different talks. You know, we heard about variation and how it's been manipulated by humans for thousands of years. You know, there's a question of whether the first breeders were women or possibly children. <laughs> Sherry, I, I'll leave you to figure that out. Um, and we also have heard how plant breeding has evolved, right? So it's gone from kind of the observed selection of natural variants to controlled mating and now to really being able to monitor the genetic recombination with molecular tools um, such as marker-assisted selection. And we also heard about tissue culture and how that can enhance recovery of variation. Um, you know, the point that I really want to make on this slide is, you know, we know that composition is highly variable. We know that genetics, environment, G by E, and sometimes um, uh, year can also affect metabolite levels. Um, we know that traditional breeding methods have been used safely for thousands of years. These can cause intended and unintended changes in genetics and composition. And um, the food that we eat on a daily basis, such as corn and wheat, is very highly variable. I think, oh, and it was you that said there is segregation in your cornflakes. So. so in GM crop development, we know that thousands of genes and events are evaluated to identify the one or possibly two that have consistent trait efficacy, stable inheritance, and absence of negative effects, and this is all before the safety assessment. Then the safety assessment comes in, and we consider the safety of the gene, the protein, plant performance, impact on the environment, et cetera. And so we know that biotech products are the most highly characterized food products consumed. The analysis looks at crop-specific key nutrients, antinutrients, and secondary metabolites. We heard about the development of the OECD consensus documents and how this is really an international process. And it's about harmonization. So what does everybody think is important to look at? Um, we've heard about analytical method development, validation and improvement. Um, we've also heard about, you know, the request for allergen data. And Rick Goodman has said, you know, there's no proof of increased risk from increased allergen expression. And there's no established thresholds or accepted methods. These are just a few of the key points that we've heard throughout this conference or workshop. Um, we've heard that statistical analysis and biological, biological considerations are complementary and that study design is key. Statistical differences should be investigated to determine the relevance to nutrition and health. And then, of course, comparators and reference ranges are useful for interpretation of compositional analysis. So after we heard all of these talks and these, these um, you know, had our panel question and answers, we came together as groups and we asked ourselves some questions, right? So we had our different round table discussions, asked ourselves some questions. Um, for example, how does, uh, what's, what's the likelihood of generating unintended effects with transgenic methodology versus uh, traditional breeding methods? Um, is the difference great enough to warrant a safety assessment? I think, you know, when we asked these questions, what we were really hoping for and what we got was a discussion. We didn't necessarily need to come to some key conclusions, but we wanted to start the discussion. And I think what we're hoping is by starting the discussion, 
you'll take this discussion back to your colleagues, the people you work with, and continue to have it. So, um, you know, I have a few of the key points from each roundtable. I'm not going to go over them. They will be available. I'll just show them very briefly. Have you, were you able to read them? <laughs> it was more for the people that are taking pictures. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit about, about our path moving forward. So I've asked you to go back, talk with your colleagues about these specific questions, about the things that you've heard you know, throughout this workshop. Um, we will be publishing the proceedings from this workshop in the Journal of Agriculture and Food Chemistry. Manuscripts of each presentation will be made by the invited speakers. And then there will be an opening article about the importance of composition analysis on food safety. Um, and then we'll also have summaries of the roundtable discussions, including some of the key questions and points that were raised, as well as consensus moving forward. Um, this publication will be open access and will be available via OC's webpage. And there will also be replays of the speaker sessions, the panel question and answer sessions, and the roundtable reports. And I think as Phil mentioned this morning, those will be available by the end of October. Okay. Um, so here we are. This, this is what we wanted our workshop outcome to be. Arrive at a better understanding of the role of compositional analysis and what it plays in the overall safety assessment of genetically modified crops. And to develop a deeper comprehension of the science behind composition analysis and how to interpret the resultant data. And I think we've reached this outcome. I'd like to thank you all for your participation, ask you to share the messages that you've heard, and we look forward to further discussion. So thank you.